Welcome back everyone, I'm the Redstone Warper here, warping redstone one machine at a time. Today I'm back with another wireless redstone video. In my last two wireless redstone videos, link in the description, we explored wireless redstone for the first time, making some improvements and inventing the first ever error correction and resync on load functionality. Then we moved on to more wireless redstone development, as well as a detailed explanation of how this whole system works. So if you haven't seen them already, go ahead and pause this video to give them a watch and get caught up as each video built on the last one. Today I'm going to show you a smaller and more stable design for both the transmitter and the receiver, as well as showcase new and improved error elimination system which is almost foolproof, as well as some initial prototypes for Wi-Fi cards for Redstone computers. So we're just going to jump right in and I'm going to show off the newer design that I have come up with. This solves a couple problems that were found over the course of testing all these ones over here. Uh, and so I will be putting updated schematics in the description as well as in my discord server So if you'd like to join that to join all the cool discussions get updates stuff like that the link will also be in the description So all of these designs have some flaws There are still picking up some errors and there's actually some design flaws with the actual transmitter itself Which you would think would be fairly simple and really hard to make have a problem, but it still had a problem uh, so this is the transmitter design that I had settled on and there's a couple things wrong with it one This extra line over here isn't actually necessary if we just take this half and then have this go into two dispensers It works just fine. So we were able to actually compact it by a couple blocks in the newer design The other problem is as the course of time went on as this daylight sensor starts going into night it sends out several pulses which is actually what updates this observer and resets the system at night or when it's turned on because the light the daylight sensor gets updated by this piston but what was happening is these transmitters were also sending out updates which would end up transmitting every time that it started transitioning into night now most of the time because this was resetting and this was transmitting at the same time they actually canceled out and that's why I never found it during testing but sometimes where whether it's lag or just the distance separating them or some fluke of the game happens they actually can send the signal which then causes this machine to spaz out and then it's very difficult to try to fix so between those couple problems there and just not liking the bulkiness of this system here it is very wide and it just kind of takes up a lot of extra room and i knew i could compact it down farther so the design process started and this is all of the things that i have tried to make over the course of making this video now a lot of these like these big arrays actually have a fundamental flaw which i discovered after bashing my head against the wall for far too long so this is the new design for the transmitter and receiver uh, as you can see it is much smaller and fits within this area much better it, it only takes up a uh, five wide slice it is much longer but I feel like in most builds longer is probably going to be easier than wider as you can fit more of them in a single chunk which we will get back to in a minute um, this has the same error correction system that we've had on all of the other ones it's just kind of moved slightly out this way because there are some things in the way I changed the way the light gets updated. The way it is set up currently is necessary, but the more finalized design, which will be in the description, has a few extra bits and bobs that all fit in here nicely. So we basically, instead of having the chunk loading detector off to the side here, I actually moved it to the back. So when this gets loaded, it creates the frostwalker ice, which is detected, which goes through all of this redstone. Uh, which I use the sticky piston to pull the packed ice down so that we only get one signal and we don't have to wait for it to melt and then we use this system to send out two pulses which actually move this block next to this daylight sensor now if we just put a observer and a lamp here you can see what happens when we activate this is we actually get a light update from this daylight sensor and that's how we're actually resetting the system and doing the clock so i just went ahead and modified this design to the most recent update so that we can show you directly how it works so this piston uh stops this clock here as it powers this little piece of redstone dust it powers this little piece of redstone dust and then this system right here just activates the uh activates the daylight sensor clock system so that we can actually reset the time when we turn it on so if we just turn it on right here you can see that the clock resetting system fires it resets the clock here so that everything is synced properly and starts the system of 
dispensing our items so that we can actually detect our system. With the new transmitter, you can see that if we transmit here, we will get a signal. And uh, what, so what we have done here, so first I made it so that these two sets of dispensers are here instead of having two lines. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Leave me alone. The next thing I did here though, is I added this torch up here, which powers this redstone dust on a full signal strength, which means no matter what, this daylight sensor will never activate this comparator sending a signal. That way, the only time that we can send a signal is if we push the button, turning this off so that we can read the signal coming from this daylight detector and sending the signal out to the array. This prevents any false triggering from happening as the transition to night happens because you're not transmitting, it's completely locked. It is impossible for this to transmit a signal, which means that you can't have false triggers at night, which means that you don't break your system. The next thing I started working on is trying to see how many of these would fit in a single chunk. So I was able to get three in this one chunk and I connected it up to only one of these chunk detectors. Since it's all in the same chunk, there's no reason to have three of them connected. Now, this is where I bashed my head against the wall for a very, very long time because this system worked. I was able to transmit and I all three of these signals independently. So I tried to create an 8-bit one. And yes, there are nine bits here. I'll explain that in a minute. But this one didn't work. It was super fluky. It didn't make any sense. So if I turn this on, the all, all three chunk uh, detectors fire so that we reset each set of clocks so that whenever each individual chunk is loaded, it resets the three that are within it. So as you can see, we got a random error there, which shouldn't have ever passed through, which is the first sign of problems. But if we activate this, which just steps through every single transmitter, you can see that not all of them fire. So only that one fired and none of the rest of them did. And what would happen is every time I would reset this, it would change. And so you can see where I had started marking out sets of ones that were working and I couldn't figure it out. So I abandoned this one and one over here when I found an error, I was like, well, maybe my chunk resetting issue, maybe just having each one have their own chunk resetter, maybe there was a problem there. But again, the same thing happened. And that's when I realized that they actually were sort of interfering with each other by being too close. And this is the design and layout that I was able to achieve that didn't interfere with each other. So if we activate these, and assuming I didn't leave any transmitters on in the background, I can push this one, this one, and this one, and this one, and you can see each one is firing one after another, just like they should be. So after getting that design working, I created the same exact design, only this one uses only one chunk loader detector to work with all three of them, and that was a massive success. So I continued on to move it over here to remove all of the junk around the bottom, which I will make sure to do with the schematics unlike last time. And I've started development on this one, which will eventually potentially become the first Wi-Fi card. Now, another really big problem is the errors. As you can see with that one over there, although this one is a non-functional design, it had an error slip through. And every once in a while, it is possible for an error to somehow get passed which is why I've designed this transmitter slash receiver design, which makes it impossible for an error to happen. So basically what I discovered was no matter what orientation these transmitters are in or what timings they have, they will always have an error at the same time. So if an error happens, both transmitters will transmit that error. And you might be asking yourself, how exactly does that help if they both create the error? Well, what I've done is I've set it up so that if just one of them fires, I know that it was a correct signal because if it was an error, it would have been detected by both and canceled out. To do this, what I've had to do is make sure that these have the exact same amount of timings so they both have one tick of delay, but I've changed which repeater has that delay so that they both fire at the same time. If I go ahead and turn the machine on here, you can see that the clocks get synced properly and we are not detecting anything. Now, of course, there is only one way to still get an error signal, and that is if you have two transmitters that are on the same timings. That will create an error that can't be stopped unless you have it on both transmitters for some reason. But we can simulate an error by pressing this middle button, 
where both sets of transmitters get transmitted to. So if there's an error, this one blocks the signal to this one and we don't get any output. So no matter how many error signals you have, they will always get blocked by it because they get detected by both transmitters. Now, if we just press just the signal one, simulating like us transmitting, we get an output. I will be putting all of the schematics for various of the sizes of transmitters and things in my Discord channel, as well as links in the YouTube video itself. So you can go and download those if you wanna mess around with them. The next thing I'm gonna be working on when it comes to wireless redstone is actually making a fully functional Wi-Fi card for computers, in which I'm going to use the perfect error calculating system here so that no errors can get transmitted, uh, as well as a few other things so that we can actually have a way to transmit binary information over wireless redstone to other locations and hopefully be able to create whole networks of computers in Minecraft. Lastly, two final pieces of information that are, are important to note is to always make sure that this machine is perfectly chunk aligned. As you can see with this one, all of its bits and bobs fit within one chunk excluding this little bit on the edge, but no entity processing things happen here. Uh, that is the biggest important thing. If there's entities like the armor stand or the items getting dispensed around, they need to be in one chunk, else things will break and you'll have a bad time. So just that's an important thing, and that goes for every transmitter, but especially for the ones that use the one chunk load detector for multiple of them, it is very important to make sure that they are all within the same chunk that you are detecting. Lastly, if for anybody who was still wondering, I am on the latest version of 1.17.1, and wireless redstone is still alive and well. Well, I think that'll be it for me today. I'm the Redstone Warper, warping redstone one machine at a time. Thanks for watching.